Hey guys, Yummy Sorceress here again, and this is for part two of our Jack Frost cosplay. Hopefully you guys are still remaining with me, but if not, today we are doing Jack Frost pants. Woohoo! Obviously, I did not make these. The whole thing with the Jack Frost cosplay that I am doing, I did not make the hoodie, I did not make the pants, but the good thing about this cosplay is that you can go out, you can get a sweatshirt that's like Jack Frost and pants that are very similar to his and you can just do small adjustments and have a really good cosplay. Sure, you can't put it into contests that claim that you've made at least 75% of your outfit, but the point is is that with cosplay, who cares? I mean, you're just there to have fun and respect and show off one of your characters that you really love and admire. I picked these up at some discount store. I'm very sorry, I don't remember where I got these. Uh, you can find them pretty much anywhere. I suggest get something cheap because you will cut them, you will destroy them a little bit. Uh, but my complaint with these is that they are skinny pants, and I hate any type of skinny pants. I hate things that wrap around my legs too tightly. But the nice thing is, is that I do get to cut a lot of the bottom here, and hopefully that will keep the blood circulating throughout my legs. If you can, I suggest maybe finding pants that are a little bit darker color than this. I had a lot of trouble even finding a color that was very close to Jack Frost's pants. I know if you take a look at your references of Jack Frost that he does have much darker brown pants. However, too bad everyone, these were the darkest brown that I could find. Anyway, these will be made into his pants by the end of the day. I will show you my process of going about how to make his pants. So first things first, everyone, you try on your lovely pants that you just bought from wherever store that you bought it from, and you, of course, complain about how it makes your butt look big, and of course that these are so tight. I don't understand how people wear these skinny jeans or whatever these things are. But anyway, next thing, Get your Sharpie marker, because this is where the fun part for me is. You get to destroy and cut these so that your legs can be free. Yes! First, look at your reference to Jack Frost. You will see that his pants only come down to more, way more above the ankle. Yes, thank you, Thunder. Thunder, I'm trying to work here. So first things first. First, you need your helper. Everyone meet Thunder. And the other one, Sake, should be here any minute now. But first, take a look at your references. You'll see that Jack Frost pants come to about here, so a little beneath the calf of your leg. So what you're gonna do with your Sharpie is that you are going to start measuring, preferably in front of a mirror. The nice thing is, is that this does not have to be perfect. Yes, Thunder agrees that this does not have to be perfect. This is because, taking a look at Jack Frost again, you are going to see that most of the bottom half is torn, shredded, and definitely not evenly cut across the bottom. So this is good. So if you mess up, it's not the end of the world because it will still look authentic. So now we get to our favorite part, cutting. Ah, Sake has joined us to now help. I always say it's good to have help when it comes to your cosplays, especially in the form of fluffy animals. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to lightly, thank you, Sake, <laughs> I am going to lightly trace around the area that I plan to cut. And I'm going to start a little short here, just so I can see what it looks like after I cut it, if I need to adjust it anymore. That looks about even from where I am sitting. It obviously doesn't look even from the camera. Maybe if I move a little bit this way. Oh, just a little bit, not so much. Anyway, I am going to take these guys off and cut them and put them back on to see if I like them at all. So pants are off now and marked at the bottom. 
what you're going to do is that take very sharp scissors, so scissors that you would use for sewing or fabric or whatnot, and you are just going to cleanly slice off the bottom of the pants where you measured. We're not going to worry about making it jagged yet. I want to first see if I like this length and then go back and adjust if I have to, and then we'll get into the whole shredding of it and making it mangy at the bottom. So I wasn't happy with the length of it the first time. I think it just needs a little bit more. So just going to snip off just a tiny bit more, an inch, maybe less. With the help of sake. So I'm going to trust that this is the correct length now. So now we are going to make it look a little bit more jagged-like. And for this, once again, you do not have to be perfect. You're pretty much just going to be making little triangles throughout the pants just to symbolize more of that rugged look that he has at the bottom. Oh, sake, don't you understand? I'm working. <laughs> Let's begin. And you can go through both layers if you want, cutting-wise. I'm going to go through just one layer. She doesn't get it at all, does she? So once you are done with cutting and making the bottom look rough, try them on again and see how they look. So these should be somewhat of what the bottom of your pants should look like. So keep in mind, there is a lot of leg room at the bottom, so about the size of your hand from your ankle all the way upwards is probably where you want to cut the fabric and making little triangle shapes in order to uh, portray the roughness at the bottom. And there you will have pretty much the hardest part about the pants, in my opinion, for this cosplay. So now we get to the fun part, in my personal opinion, and this is painting time. But before we get to this, I just want to explain that, once more, if you take a look at your references on Jack Frost, at the very ends of his pants, you will see that there's some string or some fabric that goes crisscrossing around the bottom of his legs. Now you have a choice. You could cut your own fabric, or you could buy some yarn or whatever. What I did, just to make myself have a little bit more time to work on my other cosplays, is that I found these suede strips at Michael's. Uh, you have a choice in the matter on how you want to apply these. Many cosplayers will use fabric glue and stick them right to the ends of the pants and let them dry overnight. I have not had good experience with fabric glue, so instead I'm just going to wrap them around my legs and tie them or staple them to the back, but that's just my personal choice. If you guys want to use fabric glue or even sew it on, be my guest. It's probably more secure. Now for the painting process, if you guys happen to check out my first video on how to make Jack Frost hoodie, which is all the way back there, you will have noticed that I use two types of paints. So I used the fabric paint. One was white, one was silver. So we're still going to use these same paints for the pants. However, there's a little bit of a difference between the hoodie and the pants and how the snow looks on both of these garments. For the hoodie, if you notice that there's more snowflakes and more patterns that are cascading throughout the hoodie. However, for the pants, you don't see, at least in the references that I have found, you don't really see any of these snowflake patterns, except maybe towards the bottom of the pants, you can add a few. Most of the time, though, you're going to have the same effect as I was discussing in my first video about the snow accumulations around the hemlines. So in order to replicate this snow effect, we're going to have our favorite little brush that we used in the first video. And once more, if you guys want to check out the first video and you want to learn how to make that incredible hoodie back there, please see the description in the bottom, and I will gladly walk you through how I did my Jack Frost hoodie. Safety first, children. You want to have your nice, clean workspace because you don't want your landlords coming in and screaming at you that you wrecked up the whole place. So much paint. Oh, boy. 
So as I was discussing, if you compare the hood and the pants, on the pants there's not a lot of snowflake designs. However, for my Jack Frost, I'm going to uh, put a few very small snowflake designs at the bottom. Most of it, however, will be done with one of these brushes. So you are going to take your white tulip fabric paint and you are pretty much just going to dip your brush in it and splatter it about to make the snowy effect. And other than that, I will first begin with the snowflakes at the bottom and then work my way upwards. So my tiny little snowflake designs, uh, this will be covered up with the snow thanks to the brush now. So this is pretty much the goal of what you want for the Jack Frost pants. So using one of these brushes, make sure that you splatter the paint around as much as possible. If you do the designs like I'm doing right now, you may not want to cover them all just so that you can see a little bit of your snowflake designs. Once you're satisfied enough with how much paint and white that you have put upon the pants, I would suggest letting it dry for at least four hours before turning it over and doing the other side. Especially if you have a lot of snowflakes on it, there are some bubbles that can occur once you apply the paint to it. In most cases, I would even suggest just leaving it for 24 hours and doing the back side of the pants in the morning. However, I'm going to leave this uh, for at, at least four hours, I would say, and come back and test it to see if I can even turn it over. What you can do in the meantime, and this is another optional idea, and this is what I used for the Jack Frost sweatshirt. This is the silver of the white paint. So for this, you can outline a few of the snowflakes if you did the snowflakes. In silver, this is just for a little bit of eye appeal. It does kind of bring out a little bit more of your snowflake effect, and it's really pretty if light hits it correctly. Sometimes, at least what I'm seeing with the sweatshirt, is that once the light hits it, it makes it seem a little more blue, like that of a real snowflake. So I am going to use just a little bit of this to outline some of the snowflakes on the pants here, and I might just very, very, delicately brush a little bit onto the main pants area. And one last thing that you can do while you're letting these dry is that you can take your string that you plan to wrap around the bottom of your pants and you can even start painting that. So while I'm waiting for the pants to dry, I'm going to start painting these a little bit on the white side. So several hours have passed and I believe that this is dry enough to now turn around and begin the other side with the help of my friends here.
officially done with the second part, the back of Jack Frost pants. So once again, I'm gonna let this sit for another several hours and make sure that it's completely dry. Other than that, the last thing that you have to make sure to do is on the sides, they may have been pressed down while you were painting on both sides, um, go back through and go and brush some of the white and some of the silver on the sides. You don't want to leave it bare and just plain old brown. It won't really match and it'll look a little bit funky when you start wearing it. Other than that, this is completely done. So the next time you see me in like 0.5 of a millisecond, you'll see me in my cool Jack Frost costume. This costume will be unveiled at Toronto Comic Con in mid-March, which is just a couple of weeks away. So looking forward to seeing you all there. Stop me, say hi, take a picture with me. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there. Until then, Yummy Sorceress signing off. I hope you had a great time. If you liked this tutorial, including my hoodie tutorial, you can find the hoodie tutorial at the bottom in the description, but please like, subscribe. I always like to have some friends and talk cosplay and nerd talk with. And hope to see you all at Toronto Comic Con. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Signing off.